I would like us to poke around a little bit in what is, I think, the residual of what used to be an enormous lack of self-esteem, um, of self or adoration, and is now really small, but still there. And I just feel that um, it's getting in the way. I mean, there's, it's, it's like historical, but I, I know that it, I've seen it diminish. I've seen myself coming from a place of a real adoration for myself and feeling that and knowing that and being connected to source. But there's a place where I get stuck. It's like when you started out this morning, you were talking about going for a walk, putting myself first, and that's what I, I don't seem to be able to take care of some of the things about myself physically. You know, I mean, I'm so strong and I'm so healthy and I'm so joyous most of the time. But there's this little... But there's this little piece left where it can just stop me in my tracks. We do want you to put yourself first in the sense that your only perspective is through the eyes of self. And so as you find thoughts that feel good to self, now you're connected to your source and now you have plenty of resources that you can flood to whatever is your object of attention. But we see a lot of people who are joyously helping others and it seems overtly putting others first and in doing so they are having great satisfaction and joy in the process of it. In other words, a mother who tends to her child is certainly putting her child in the position that you would call first. But she is getting enormous satisfaction from it because she is fulfilling something that she's intended for a very long time. So there's discord in that. The discord comes in doing something for someone and resenting doing it. In other words, you are putting yourself first when you are serving others and joyful in the serving. The discord comes when you are feeling that your resources are limited and there's not enough of you to go around and so you are doing it out of obligation rather than out of wanting to do it. So let's call it allowing and resisting rather than doing for others or doing for myself. Allowing or resisting. So I can do for myself and allow the energy to flow or I can do for others and allow the energy to flow. Or I can do for myself and not allow the energy to flow or I can do for others and not allow the energy to flow but it's not the action it's not the function of what I'm doing it's the function of how I'm feeling while I'm doing it you see so as we've been talking about these different emotional set points we can feel as you said in your very clear words that you have come a long way in other words you can feel that you have been coming more and more into self is something that everyone is born doing and then many of you lose as you're trying to find your relationship to everyone else around you and then most eventually come back around to it in other words you always do when you make your transition sometimes you see very little ones selfish enough to kick up a ruckus in order to make sure they get what they want and very old ones selfish enough to kick up a ruckus to make sure that they get what they want. But in neither of those cases is there alignment in the way we mean it. In other words, we don't want you to think that you have to kick up a ruckus in order to demand something from someone else. We want you to understand that the entire universe is ready to comply with you. You just have to find the balance that lets the universe comply. And so the way you selfishly put yourself back in the place that you allow well-being to flow to you in the way you deserve and in the way that is absolutely normal is just through trial and error. In other words, you throw some fits and see where it gets you. Some fits and see where it gets you. And you soften and appreciate and see where that gets you. In other words, it truly is person by person, subject by subject, just feeling your way until you feel it click into place. It really, really is that. So we can't give you one process or even one way of approaching this because there are lots of different subjects in your experience that might require a little different response from you because on some subjects, your vibration on the emotional scale is way up here in appreciation. On other subjects, it's over here in fear. In some subjects, it's over here in a feeling of overwhelmment. In some subjects, it's all the way up here in ecstasy and joy and satisfaction. 
And so there's no one way. You just got to pick a subject and then talk about it with one thing in mind as you've got your ear to the ground. How can I approach this subject, which must be important to me because it keeps coming up, in a way that feels increasingly better? So pick a subject that you would energy on and let's do it. Um, well, it's, I'm amazed that you brought up the, uh, because I don't remember mentioning helping or being in service to anything and feeling resentment, and yet you went right to that. So, Well, it's pretty obvious in your vibration. Okay. Uh, then, I, then I'll do that. Um, I have a 92-year-old mother that lived with me for 14 years, and I finally became healthy enough that I was willing to put her in an assisted living facility and let that go. And, and I'm still in the process of going out and seeing her on a regular basis once a week, whereas my brother doesn't deal with her at all. And I've managed to get over any resentment. Um, that I did feel about Yes, we don't feel resentment no, from no, him I, about her or about no. him. But we do feel guilt. Are we getting it from somewhere else? <laughs> In other words, uh, talk to us about that just a little bit. Well, she is senile. And that would be something else I'd like to ask you. Just basically, is it the same as any other dysfunction, physical dysfunction? It's the way many people begin their transition. In other words, if someone is no longer focused in a way that they are calling life through them here, mm -hmm. but they are still beating the drum of not believing that they have fulfilled the reason for being here, then they set themselves up in a situation where they can't go and they can't stay. And so the kind source energy begins a gentle withdrawal of focus that then makes it easy for the scales to tip. I thought that was right. Yeah. Yes. So the guilt that you think I'm feeling or that you feel in me is possibly some sort of abandonment of her and then it, that rings a bell with me in terms of I've had a a fear of abandonment in my life that I don't know where it comes from but I know that it strikes a chord well when you think about it think about coming into this experience and being dependent for a time upon someone like your mother and never really ever feeling like she was fulfilling the role that you would have liked her to have fulfilled. And so even though she was physically there, it never really felt like it quite fit into place in the way that it should have. And then we're not just talking about you, although we are. We're talking about almost everyone. And then on the other end of it, here so many of your parents are now not able to take care of themselves. And so you look at that and you wonder where you are headed. So then this insecurity just sort of feeds on itself because I started out not being able to take care of myself. I depended upon somebody who didn't do a very good job of taking care of me. And now I see that that person who didn't take very good care of me is now needing me to take care of. And then what's in store for me? In other words, you just can't focus. You Focus. You can't go there every week and see all of those people that are uh, not able to take care of themselves without it activating within yourself some worry about where you are headed. And what we want you to feel is that the universe will provide anything and everything that you want. And when you say, my mother was my sole provider, which was truly not true, in other words, wholly not true, not even close to being true, just as... You were not her provider and are not. In other words, there are so many resources. This universe will accommodate all of you in delightful and effective ways. You just have to let yourself off the hook as being one who must find a provider. In other words, here is what we are saying. You're wanting to see universal forces Call it God, call it inner being, call it universal forces, call it source energy, call it this energy stream of well-being, call it whatever resonates well with you when you name it. But try to accept that it will always provide for you. It always has. Unbelievably. Well, that's good. That's a good vibrational place. Now, if it always provides for you, does it always provide for everyone else? If they allow it. And if they don't allow it, can you fill that void? No, I cannot. So you've come to the place where you are willing to let everyone be 
they are own independent advocate of well-being you're really ready to allow that I am coming from a place of being a fixer of everything I, I would fix people to death till they were on their knees you know and now I don't do that <laughs> So we believe you. We can feel that vibrational trek that you've made. So now, where are you and what do you want us to help you with? It's almost like there's a dichotomy. There's a, a, a dual personality in the sense that sometimes when I'm out in the world, in the flow, I am in sometimes ecstatic joy. I just feel there's an Abraham tape in my car all the time um, I've been focusing on it for seven years I've made incredible changes in my life and coming from a place of literally self-loathing that I wasn't even aware of and now I've processed it to just this occasional when I'm almost like when I'm exhausted and I don't give myself permission to go to bed early I want to value myself to the point that I can joyfully get up in the morning and go for a walk before anything else happens. I want to feel that I deserve to go to bed at a reasonable hour. What keeps you from getting up in the morning and taking a walk, which you claim is your heart's desire? Why don't you do that? Who stands in your way? I do. Because... Because it is frivolous, because it is irresponsible, because there are more important things to be done? Exactly, and the biggest whine that I have, the, it, and up until a month ago when the last tape came out, which was the first time I'd heard you talk about enjoying everything that you do and not being in overwhelm, it was, I, I mean, it was like reverse, I hit the tape, reverse, forward, reverse, so many times until I finally sank in that if I took pleasure in whatever I did and just turned over and let go the rest I finally am moving out of that overwhelmment and this feels like the last little piece of it if I can now just move into a place where I love myself so much really truly love myself so much that I can get up and not worry about taking well, there are a lot of, of ways of going about that and we want to and we want to guide you to that but how about this this is a different tact how about everything that I think that I need to do is all in order to propel me to some place that when I get there I think I will be happier so everything that I am doing no matter what it is all of my lists of right and wrongs are all about me getting to a manifestation that I believe then I will be happier so why don't I take a shortcut and just go get happy exactly <laughs> We encourage you to test this. This is not a theory that we are practicing for the first time on humans. <laughs> Unlike your medical research. <laughs> this is the way the universe operates. In other words, everything about law of attraction and this inclusion-based universe is about this. And the happier you are, the more you allow... Mm -hmm. So we have an assignment for you. We want you to please you first. And we want you to tell everyone else to take a flying leap. Only problem is, you too. <laughs> Only thing is, in your case, there are not that many others that you will be able to tell to take a flying leap. In other words, there are not a lot of others that are making demands on you. It is your own internal contradictions. It's like Esther. She will say, I am free to do anything in the world that I choose to do. For me to ever be in a moment of complaining is as screwy as it gets. Because I'm in charge of everything about my life experience. And we say, yes, but you have these habits of thoughts that are carryovers from when you didn't believe that you were in charge of That's everything. Exactly. And you sort of have to release them just one triumphant whoosh at a time. Yeah. Yes, Thank indeed. you very much. Yes, indeed. <laughs>